Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in yesterday's one we looked at the new i3-14100F. I mentioned and many of you also pointed out that you can buy an i5-12400F for very similar money which is of course a bit older but has two extra cores and looks the much better deal on paper. In CPU intensive tasks the i5 really makes good use of the higher core and thread count outscoring the i3 in the Cinebench multi-test yet falling ever so slightly short in the single core benchmark. When it comes to rendering videos, the i5 feels a lot snappier to use in DaVinci Resolve and will of course render projects in a much more timely fashion. For keen content creators, this is clearly the better buy. We don't need to spend too much time on this video really, so I've just run a small handful of games to highlight any performance differences. Both CPUs are paired with the same 16GB of 3200MHz DDR4 and an RTX 4070 Super, a card that is probably a bit higher end than what you'd realistically pair either of these with. At least it'll help highlight any performance differences. Cyberpunk 2077 first, this is quite processor intensive and as such the 6 core i5 pulls ahead in terms of an average frame rate but more importantly the percentile lows are greatly improved. These figures are arguably more important to consider because the higher numbers represent better consistency which is of course paramount to an enjoyable gaming experience. Kingdom Come Deliverance is also pretty CPU intensive, especially in and around Ratai. Again, our average frame rate has increased with the i5, but more importantly, we're seeing better percentile figures once again. In all honesty, the game doesn't feel that much smoother to play, it's still a bit all over the place here. I'd also like to commend the i3-14100F for what is a solid effort, not just here, but throughout. Four cores aren't obsolete just yet. I also tried Starfield because despite what are some pretty strong opinions, sometimes in the comments regarding the game itself, there's no doubt it can prove troublesome on certain hardware. The i3 did a good job in achieving at least 60 FPS, but the i5 did do better with at least 70. Again with improved 1.1% numbers. Not that it was completely problem free even with the higher core and thread count. Other games will be a lot closer in performance with the first being Assassin's Creed Valhalla. While a faster GPU might widen the gap, the 4070 Super isn't being fully utilised most of the time, even with the i5. Furthermore, you probably wouldn't pair an i3 with a card like this, so this just goes to show that on some occasions, the i3 will do almost as good as the i5, especially if you're using an entry level or mid range GPU instead. Sure, there is still a difference between the figures on paper, but they are quite close. To finalise we have Forza Horizon 5, another game whereby both processors came very close to each other performance wise. There were of course still some slight variations in these figures. Now to be honest, if these two are the same or even close in price where you live, so 20 or 30 pounds difference, I'd go with the i5 for a bit more peace of mind, especially as someone who edits a lot of videos. The extra court and thread count will also help in certain games. This much was probably obvious, but I was curious to see just how much of a difference there was. It's also worth noting that the i3 still did a good job, but I still can't suggest buying it over the cheaper 12100F, which is the better buy for more budget budget builders. For everyone else, well, if you're considering a 14100F, be sure to check out the price of the 12400F even if you have to consult the used market too, because you certainly won't regret it when it comes to those more challenging titles. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.